<laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Welcome to episode 30 plus four of Rushed Vibes. I was being silly um, and jamming to the beat and almost missed my cue um, and also made myself dizzy. But we're here. We're alive. We're healthy. And we are ready to... Rush the vibe with our tribe. Hope everyone's doing well. Hope everyone has enjoyed this week. Hopefully it wasn't too long of a week. We still have our um, 4th of July lights going on behind us. Trying to be patriotic. Because we don't we don't just stop when the holiday stops. No, we march on here yeah. at Rush Vibes. And I don't have another holiday. <laughs> <laughs> we keep the vibe going. Yeah, the next holiday, I guess, is... Um, is Labor, does Labor Day have colors? Is Labor Day more Labor Day? I feel is like an American holiday, so it would be red, white, and blue. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not maybe sure. I don't think has any Halloween. Colors. I'll have to see what decor. I think it'll probably transition to fall. Just overall fall decor. So we're really about to have. We've we have yet to take a picture of our tree. I think Justin has taken pictures of today. it on our personal IG, but we have yet to actually take to take this tree down. But we have yet to put an actual picture of of it have we gotten a picture of it in all the different no it's probably like in background no. we should have done I, my vision was to do like family picture every time we redecorate the tree um so that'll have to be but this was like a trial year so now next yeah. year i kind of know how to do it so like this tree is about to just be up forever, <laughs> forever. And, and like anybody who comes <laughs> over you're just gonna see the tree up people got used to it i did see i did post a picture of savi and she was standing in front of the tree and the tree had nothing to do with the picture. But someone says, is that a Christmas tree? And I was like, correction, no. it is a holiday tree. Or the July um, tree. And you're you're not going to come with that disrespect. So, so, yeah, I think now that we've done our guinea pig year, I know what I have to prepare for. So I have to prepare for, like, pictures for birthdays, um, more decor for um, different holidays. And I think I'm just going to centralize it around the tree and the stairs as opposed to trying to like get the whole house festive. Um, but I think 4th of July has since what Valentine's day, no Easter 4th of July has been my best tree so far. Um, it's actually like festive. Um, but the dollar store had better decor. So I think next we're going to keep this up for a little bit and then see what decor they offer. I'm thinking they're going to transition to fall stuff. Um, summer didn't work as well as I thought it would. It was more right. like it beachy, did not. And did not. Paradise stuff. So you see like the little beach. The sandals and the palm trees. Not behind me. But fall is going to be fire and I'm actually really excited for Halloween. I think a ho- the Halloween tree and the Halloween decor is going to be like amazing. 1997 Tina, who is my mom, is going to be like the devil is here um, because we weren't allowed to do Halloween stuff. Um, I actually didn't trick or treat for the first time until we took solace. Anyway... Are you serious? Yeah, that was my first time trick or treating. Oh, y'all pastors, kids, man, y'all got it rough out here. So rough. I couldn't even read Harry Potter. My friend Jill. Well, I, n- I never read Harry Potter either. But my yeah. friend Joe gave me all four hardcover books, and my parents made me give them away. And when I told a friend of mine, and she like had a heart attack. She was like, "Oh, what? Do you know how much those are worth?" And I was like, oh. "Yeah, they made J.K. like a billionaire." I had to give them away because crazy. The devil. I eventually had to get rid of my Pokemon cards because some evangelists had preached that they had demons. You know, there's a, there's a funny story in my family. I think I've told you this about uh, the Pokemon uh, card phase. So I would think I was in middle school, elementary and middle school, between between or, or, or one of the two, when the Pokemon craze was like peak, right? So I'm true to my last name. Uh, I'm normally, at, I normally catch the tail end of like frenzies and, and, and fads and whatnot. So uh, one afternoon, um, I, I used to get an allowance when I was a kid, but I would always spend it because I didn't <laughs> have any kind of discipline when it came to, to money. So I, I had some, some some bills, you know, just straggling. So I was able to put them together uh, to get a first pack of Pokemon cards because people have been talking about it. But I, I'd gotten in with this new group of kids and they, it was all the rage. So I was like, yo, I want in. So. Um, you know, I'm, I'm putting quarters and, and dimes and, and, and single bills together. And I got like, I don't remember how much a pack cost, but let's say I had like $5 and 75 cents and a pack is, is six bucks. Right. 
let's act like taxes on it. Sales tax isn't a thing right now. So I go downstairs. My mom is, is missing in action. I go downstairs and of course, unfortunately, that just leaves my dad. <laughs> my mom, if my mom's not around, and you'll see why I said it like that after when I get into the story. So I'm like, Dad. So he looks up from Star Trek: Next Generation or whatever was on the TV, and he's like, "What?" And I say, "Yo, I'm trying to get these Pokemon cards. Can you take me?" And he was like, "Yeah, I guess so." And I was like, "All right, cool. I need a quarter to make six. I got five seventy-five. I just need a quarter to get six. And this dude, you'd have thought I asked him for a million dollars. This dude looked at me and was like, I was like, no. And I'm like, this is a quarter. Like, why you can't spot your last born child, the last grandson of your of oh your parents? Gosh. You can't spot me a quarter? And he was like, no, go upstairs. I was like, so I said some things about him under my breath. Things I'm not proud of. <laughs> but I take back fully because I love my father and everybody knows me knows I love my father. But yeah, so I could, I missed out on the Pokemon phase because dude couldn't give me a quarter. You couldn't have asked one of your brothers? What brothers? <laughs> 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 one was in, one was fighting a war and then the other one was like in his room with the door locked. You could have just gone in his room and checked his pants. He was in the room the and it was locked. Room? Nah. You're not strategic. Dude. I went to my father who I knew had a, he had the, the thing but that trips me out. The thing that trips me out is he he had a quarter. But you know your dad. He probably had several quarters. He probably could have fronted the there entire. Was, you know, it was crazy. There was probably a quarter in the little uh the little the compartment in the, in the van. Yeah, because you used to keep. You know what? But you there. messed up. You should have waited till he already got you to the destination and then asked for the quarter. No, because then I'd have been embarrassed because he still wouldn't have given me the quarter. <laughs> My dad does not fall prey to peer pressure. It's so hard anything. for me to believe because I see him with his granddaughters, and he's I'm not. Such, I was I was his kid. She, these I was girls not his have granddaughter. him I'm not wrapped his granddaughter. around their fingers, so it's like for him. To I'm the just, kid. Look, I'm the kid. He didn't want. I know. <laughs> you're kid. your mom's last. I'm the board. kid. My mom begged him for. He was like, "Yeah, whatever, fine." <laughs> How did we even get to this? A court because oh, you were the, talking about the Pokemon. Demons of the Pokemon. Yeah. yeah so. I hate. I missed out on the Pokemon phase though. I had Burger King was given away like if you got one of those special meals they had like the Pokemon ball and if you opened it it was a so there if was you a gold. if you if you eat poison we'll give you a Pokemon yes. mm. but there was a, a allegedly I think maybe I doubt it was 24 karat gold but it was like eight karat gold know, eight karat. Pokemon card yeah, I don't know where it went I had like so, two of those so um my parents were down with that because it was gold Oh, <laughs> but the regular gone. cards, like I had, I had a, acquired Pikachu, and that's all of a sudden now it's like, oh, this is this is this is demon, this prophet on when the Christian Network said that this is demon stuff, so you can't have it anymore, that's y'all. Hilarious. That's hilarious. If you know the stuff that I've lost or not been able to participate in because of demons. You know, and it's like not that. easy being a preacher's kid. It's not easy being a preacher's kid. Asterix that's African. And Africans be on some other stuff. You'd be asleep in the middle of the night. It's like 245 and you just hear tongues and oil and water. And she's like, I got school in the morning. I need to wake. <laughs> just, I'm glad. Just, nah, 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 nah. It's like, why? <laughs> you can't pray I'm for glad. me I'm... in your prayer closet. <laughs> Did y'all not do your parents didn't do that? No. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> Absolutely I know somebody's not. parent did that. Somebody's grandma, somebody's mom who is listening to this podcast endured. Endured. I'm like, when are y'all gonna sleep so you can get up and go to work? Yeah, we had that uh we went to like when I was growing up, we went to like that, that Joel Osteen church. Dear Lord. <laughs> Thirty <laughs> oh, minutes service. Oh passive oh passive service. Thirty minutes in like, and out. I wish I wish I had grown up in a church like that. No. Holy Spirit. Like, service supposed to be done at 2. Yeah, we got up. When's Holy Spirit going to drop? One fifty-seven. It used to be like, we got up for this? 4.30. You're still just... in church. Like, come on, Jesus. We got seven days left in the week. You can't stretch this this out. Whew. Yeah. Don't get me started on Bible study. Anyway. Yeah. Sorry. This is my. Yeah, we didn't do all that wild stuff. My though. PTSD. Yeah, we can lay down like that. Pentecost. Um, so, Jessica is, is wearing... Uh, is representing two of our of two small businesses that are, are near and dear to our hearts. One is the uh, the Married and Having Fun podcast. We had uh, one of the co-hosts, Cynthia, on one of our friends. I think she was like 
she was she like was early. Right? She was like episode thirteen or something like that. First um, yeah, she was she was on Mompreneur March. Uh, JC is is basically family at this point. Um, hosts uh, women's retreats. Uh, they just hosted her and her husband, I believe, just hosted their very first couples retreat. Mm-hmm. Um, that was uh, I, I'm, I'm hearing it was it was a flat out fire. good time. And uh, her women's retreats are usually on fire. Jessica like has been to like all but one, I think. And the and, one um, I missed, I to this day I'm still like, dang. Yeah, it was a good reason, but it still hurt yeah. that I had to miss. So, uh, and then she's also rocking a, a Planet Earth shirt. Uh, this is the Earth Day edition of uh, the Support Your Folk uh, brand. They dropped the Earth Day edition, and I'm also rocking one Earth of their very, huh? Isn't Earth Day in April? Yeah, and so he dropped it back then. Oh, but okay. I just not bought it. Was it. Like, so it's kind of late. Yeah, yeah, got yeah. It. Uh, right. And but you know, every day is Earth Day. Cause we only got one, so we got to preserve it. Yeah. So, uh, and I'm Just rocking one. About Earth long time. <laughs> I'm rocking one of the earlier, uh, the early, early, early drops. They said we gonna be um, dead and gone. Brand. We're not concerned so, about. this. Did you see Earth. the ocean was on fire the other day? The, how's the ocean? Did oil spill? Yeah, it was okay. like a, a, a pipe broke or something like that. But the ocean was on fire. The ocean, the ocean. Someone the said it was on uh, fire. Someone, no, that's some demon stuff. <laughs> I shouldn't say I shouldn't say this, but somebody I, I saw on uh, social media, somebody's like, "Well, at least I know Donald Rumsfeld made it." <laughs> Yo, I have no, I had no, I got no, I got no qualms with Donald Rumsfeld, but I just thought that that was kind of that was kind of funny. That was kind of funny. I mean, I'm sure his his people wouldn't think so. But Yo, Greta about apparently he off. did some apparently he did some really grimy stuff when he was wasn't he like spearheaded the war the, yeah. the longest war in American history <laughs> that that sent my brother overseas yes yes he did um, but we're not here to talk about that so uh, what are we where anything else we should talk about in our first few seconds or should we just get we got new neighbors we did get new neighbors I've been watching them like a hawk um, you know we uh, we are. Victims of having bought into a neighborhood at a really good price, at a really good uh, interest rate, and um, we found out that a lot of times when that happens is people sell very quickly as the uh, um, the values on the homes go up, and then you get uh, people who buy the home specifically to rent, and then you get renters in your neighborhood. And uh, not to put not to to put a blanket statement out there, all renters aren't like this but the runners we've encountered have been less than stellar yeah people fighting in the street yeah one of people them punching mamas had a license plate that said dark skin and once we saw that license she was probably I mean, she was we, we, knew, and it no, was a, it was a charger too we knew we were done. we knew it was over charger because that's when they the, they kicked the garage yeah, I mean, it was, was fighting grandma there was something the mailbox there was something every there was something every like oh seemingly every other night and it was always late at night, and at the time, Sal, our, our oldest, was young. Luckily, she sleeps like she a She sleeps champ. like she works 12 hours she sleep, She'll sleep through anything. She'll sleep through a tsunami. <laughs> she um, slept through her sister and then we had, beating her. <laughs> we had another, we, and there's like a whole row, like across the street, I think with the exception of the house on the corner, like everybody rents. Uh, yeah. But there's two houses in particular, like that are right next to each other, where the people were the most just obnoxious, like ratchet like fireworks and if y'all knew how many and the firework and the, the fireworks police. casings falling in our yard because they're doing it right in the street voice. my karen voice little just dogs pooping on my grass everybody knows me loud I, I, lo- music. I, lo- I love my grass loud music reefer guest, guest parking reefer in front of our house <laughs> on our grass um, yes. then, but then there was one house where the people just like left dipped and like and, and we knew after a while, like nobody was living there because there was a couple windows upstairs that were just open. And, and this they is were like, obnoxious people. So when you're when obnoxious people disappear, it's just like dead winter. But the when house, they, they were sketchy open. because they only had New York plates and anyone who ever came to the house had New York plates. And I feel like they were th- look, they might have been running something. Look, I'm just saying y'all, cartels be real in these streets. And somebody was always fighting. Like always. Somebody was or almost fighting. Like I saw one night, there was this woman who came to the house and she just was like laying on her horn, like blaring her horn. Eleven o'clock at night, like oh no, I don't care if there's anybody else in the neighborhood trying Kid to sleep. Baby sleeping. I don't care if it's a school night, I'm just gonna blare the horn because I'm obnoxious. And then dude comes out and then they get into a word, into an argument, and he actually chases her. And, and it wasn't like a chase, like oh I'm I'm a punky, like I'm I'm, no, he, was I'm punky. he was actually if he had caught her, like I'm 
I probably would have witnessed like a homicide. Luckily, she got away. She hit him with a hit a juke at the end, and he was I in believe. his he was in his house shoes, so he had no traction. So he, you know, he almost fell. And then she, you know, she ran off and drove off. But like, it's just crazy stuff. Crazy stuff. So, we but we got, have new neighbors now. We do, and there's hope. So the four houses across the street from us, there's hope, have become rentals, and I've been watching. And the last house is now occupied, and I, and they finally started parking their car. It's been like two weeks that they've been like moving in, and they were moving in at night. So at first I was like that suspect, because um, I was just like, mm-hmm. don't want anybody to see the bodies. <laughs> exactly. Like, why are you moving in at night? And they'd bring like this big. 26 foot u-haul but they did this over the course of two weeks like it was like every night around 11 30 you'd hear like beep 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 of a truck backing into the driveway i wouldn't hear it because i'd be asleep but i'm nosy I'm just uh, and i work on pacific time so that's usually the time i'm coming to bed so i'm like why are these people moving in so late because the last people who moved in late they were suspect and i had to care and police them several times um looks like a, it's, a, it's a white woman it's a black man so we've got the interracial, we got the swirl going on. So we're, on. we're actually going to be discussing our neighbors on, on the are. podcast. Okay. Um, but you, y'all don't understand how we had to pray. I like when I when the the four lease sign disappeared. I was like, Jesus, please, brown Jesus from Arabia, Baby from Jesus. Mesopotamia, please don't let these people bring down our property value. Mesopotamia, don't do it. Wow. I don't. I I don't like having to use the Karen voice. I don't like having to call on people. I don't like having to pretend like I don't see you when I'm driving by your house because I detest you that much. I like neighbors I can rough. wave to. It was rough. The people, especially the people who used to live like directly across right. the street. Because the couple, the couple that lived there before, they were, they were, they were different. They were they different. Were, they had the snake. They, they had pet like reptiles. Um, and they brought this little big snake out and let us hold it one time on himself. i put it around my neck it was pretty cool i was like no like even um, when i went to go touch it I was but like, uh, unfortunately they they ended up moving so we were like man i really hope we get another you know another you know family like them and it just this wasn't i wanted a latino family um i mean i just wanted yeah, i wanted some diversity and it, and and it wasn't so much who could cook and it wasn't so much that they were obnoxious because i mean they had a couple a couple nights where there there's some fights or whatever going on but it was just like the small stuff like park in front of our driveway. Um, That's my pet peeve. Yeah, like when there's a whole being, other space you can just being, park and being don't loud. Park driveway. Like I, you know, and, and I noticed we're coming across like real petty. Like we're just like some old, <laughs> old. Uh, but the thing is, once you move to suburbia, couple. you change. Like if this is an apartment complex, you're like yeah. Like okay. when we lived, like when we lived just outside Uptown when we were date before we got married, like it things were people would be drunk in the hallway, and, and we it would just be just like, like, okay. Yeah, I mean, we're up, we're uptown. We're up. This is what you expect. Younger, younger demo. This is what you expect. People skidding through the parking deck, like okay. <laughs> That's 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 to be expected. I paid yeah. extra money to have people be obnoxious near me, so I yeah. can be near Uptown, so I can have that clout. But when I see the skyline, we pay, we for this house, we we prayed, <laughs> we worked so hard for this house, we built it, we, I, I almost lost my mind for it. So whenever someone moves in, I don't care if you're a renter or an owner. Whenever someone moves in and they're like they're not they're not at the caliber of what this neighborhood should be, then I get distressed. And you got people speeding through the neighborhoods. I got what's kids. The, what's the caliber that they should be? I, I mean. I didn't realize we were going to ramble for like I just, 10 I, minutes just on, something I've needed on the quality to get of, off our, my of our neighborhood. I don't have a problem with renters. I just like quality renters. I love renters. I like renters who. We are renter friendly here. We are renter friendly. But renters who have ownership mentality. That's the type of people i like not these people who are like i'm just here for the duration of this lease i don't give a blank i'm gonna turn up no thankfully i guess god has just heard my prayers or just been annoyed with me enough that the three families that have moved in because all of those houses slowly turned into rental houses um they've been good they everybody's been nice no one no issues i remember one when someone was moving in i saw one car and i was like oh david I think it was a charger or a challenger. I was like, I don't know about this. Um, yes, I car stereotype, <laughs> car stereotype. That's racist. But they turned out to be good. So I'm hoping that this family, racist. they're good. 
And, you know, like part of me wants to send them like a welcome card, like welcome to the neighborhood. No, I'm not going to do um, that. But then I'm like, well, what if she's like a crazy Karen? Um, and now I've, I've opened the door. I'm not going to do that. And, you know, she like tries to like cut my baby out of me. So, you know, because people do that. Um, it's a whole thing. All right. So I think we're, we've reached the point where we take but a anyway, break. But anyway, if you're going to be a renter <laughs> and you're going to rent in a suburban suburbs neighborhood, just come with the quality. Okay. If you know so, you're going to be blasting music and you're going to be rocking that bass and you're going to be speeding, stay in the city limits. But just just be mindful. There are kids who need to sleep. There are parents who need these kids to sleep. There are kids who have to catch the bus in the morning. They're just... So with that... And just don't move to my neighborhood. There so are plenty with, of with, other neighborhoods with, that with, are not at the caliber of our neighborhood sh- that you are welcome to go be right to. quiet. Just sit there and be quiet. That hood. Sorry. With that, we're going to take a break and we'll be back. Maybe. Stay tuned. All right, we're back. Jessica's just oh, now. <laughs> Jessica's know. just now uh, watching the put in reverse Terry video that is so I, so popular, most mostly that. around the Fourth of July. Um, oh, this isn't the first year it's come out. No, no, no. Oh. It's been out for for a few <laughs> years. So we 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 got We got to do our best to keep Jessica up to speed. Sometimes yeah, I'd be busy. I got too many things to do, too many people to keep alive. So, um, so we want to talk about a certain aspect money, of money, money, money. relationships this week uh, because money, I came across something money, money, on social media, and Jessica also came across something. I don't know if it was social media or some of the shows that she was watching, but we wanted to talk about money in relationships, and I guess this would apply to uh, you know when you're just dating. You're seriously dating, but more, you know, more importantly, when you're when you're married. Um, so we'll talk about two different two different instances um, when you're dating, um, and then when you're married about uh, certain topics of money. But there was a, a post on Reddit. I need you to stop. <laughs> <Thank> you. <laughs> I didn't know how long there was a there was there was there was a post on on Reddit. I believe that my uh, my my little little big brother, our big little brother, uh, Alan, sent to me, where it's titled. Um, I don't know. There is an acronym. I don't know what it means. Um, but oh, basically, money mo problem. <laughs> uh, basically, uh, someone invited their girlfriend on an expensive vacation uh, and expected her to pay all of her share. Um, in um, parentheses, I make more than her. So I'm going to read this story. So hopefully I have a good narrator's voice. I'm also going to put it up on the screen so you can read it for yourself or if you just want to fast forward and see you know, what we talk about. But I'm going to read this. And I, I believe this was a serious post, so there may be at some points where it's it's funny, but I believe this was this was serious. So, hello. My girlfriend, myself, my parents, and my brother and his wife all went on a vacation in another country a week ago. My brother and I were the ones who did most of the planning of the itinerary, although we asked we did ask everyone else for input. For background, I make around a hundred and fifty thousand um as an IT consultant, my girlfriend is a teacher making forty five thousand. My parents are pretty affluent as well as my brother and sister-in-law. My girlfriend knew this trip was coming up and took on a second job waitressing on the weekends for several months to get ready for it. We have always split things 50-50 in the two years we have been together. There were a few times on the vacation when she did not go. She did not go on outings with us, wine tasting, scuba diving, ETC. She also would only eat two meals a day, simply stating that she was on a budget. My family does favor more high-end, parentheses, expensive places. My parents thought it was very strange that she only eats two meals a day, although she normally eats three. When when we got home, I asked her why she skipped out on several of the outings and only ate two meals a day. I mentioned how I heard her (laughs) stomach. I mentioned how I heard her stomach growling one night, and she said I she said I was concerned about her having an eating disorder. She got teary-eyed and said that three meals a day wasn't fiscally feasible for her and neither were the outings and that she chose not to go on. She went on three of the six outings. She said she was not expecting everything to cost so much and she was overwhelmed. She also said she didn't know if this is going to work long term if she is expected to go on vacations like that with people who make so much more than her. I feel bad that I did not pick up on her discomfort sooner. 
but we did agree to split everything 50-50, and I don't know why she agreed to come if the cost was an issue. End reading. So, um, <laughs> I'm somebody who generally tries to find humor in everything, sometimes to my, you know, to my downfall, but there's some funny stuff in there. <laughs> the fact that <laughs> he heard his woman's stomach growling, it was just like, babe, you need to eat. <laughs> Is hilarious. Um, if not for him just being totally oblivious to why your girlfriend is not eating. So this is interesting. Um, one, such a gap in income. Uh two, it looks like there may be a gap in in social status, social class. Uh and um Someone who it seems like this is a couple that was very hardline on their agreement to pay 50-50 on things. And they've been together for two years. So, I mean, that's not a, that's not an insignificant amount of time, right? This is, you would categorize, you've been with somebody for two years, you categorize it as a serious relationship, right? So, um, lovely wife of mine, what was your reaction when I sent this to you to read and hearing me read it again? I was pissed. <laughs> And I'm still pissed. And I'm so glad that this young woman said, I don't see this. I don't know if this is, I don't know. I can't quote her. She said Uh, because. (laughs) This is going long term. This is not someone you need to invest your life with. This is, this is not, he's not husband material. In my opinion, he is a buffoon and a doofus. Wait. And he comes from buffoon and doofus people. And I say this with all, all no actually with no due respect because these this these buffoons and doofuses yo the dude makes $150,000 he makes 3 times more than his girlfriend who was an educator who was giving her life to prepare the youth for the future You want to plan this extravagant vacation with your mammy and your pappy and his, and, bro- and his brother and his brother and his sister-in-law. Mm-hmm. So they're all pretentious. No, I, I that's get, not no. fair. No, 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 that's no, not fair. Because there are two types of rich white people. No, how do you know they're white? There's no, this there's is no, white. This is you don't, white you have mess. no, you have no this idea. Is see, some white mess. see, ma'am, you have no, it doesn't say whether they're white or black. This just says my girlfriend and I, you have no idea. This is white because if no. he, if they were black, he'd have been like my that's not girl. Fair. That's not fair. My girl. No, that's not fair. Bay, boo. <laughs> they're just some. Oh, so you're stereotyping? Yeah, no. They're oh, just, yeah, yeah. There's no, some black I, connotations. Yeah. No, nah. this is this is not Latino. You don't know. Maybe these some Asians. Maybe these some not, crazy rich no. Asians. I I, uh, I reject that out of hand. These that are is either not some fair. rich white people no. or some rich Asians. Um, but these aren't black people. You don't know that. You know what's funny is if it comes out that this is actually a black couple, you're going to have to eat so much crow. I'm just gonna I'm so just, much. Cool. I'm, I'm just actually gonna, no. I'm, gonna change I'm it going around. to I'm going to launch a Reddit <laughs> investigation into Find the out. race I, of this. I feel this like OP. these are white people because okay. I just think it's it's crazy. One that you're like, okay, there are people in relationships with of different social constructs. Let's like, let's, let's just talk about. Not worry about race. Let's I'm just talk about race. okay. I'm no, saying I'm different just, social constructs. Okay. So you know, a rich woman or a wealthier woman who comes from privilege dating a man who's lesser. We've seen that. It's in movies. It's in TV shows. You see the vice versa. It's usually not a as big of a deal when it's a rich man and a, a lower financial class woman. I don't know if that's a politically correct way to say that. But um, even though people are like, "Oh, she's a gold digger and she's going to kill him or whatever." Um, so that, that that that's my blanket. He makes one hundred fifty thousand dollars. She makes forty five thousand dollars. He comes from privilege. So even if he didn't make one hundred fifty thousand dollars, he still has mommy and daddy and brother and sister with their money. So everybody's rich. So she's already putting herself in an uncomfortable situation. One, I think he's an ass for the fact that he sat there and watched his his already exhausted girlfriend because being a teacher is not an easy job um get a part-time job to afford a a vacate as a waitress which is also not an easy job they make good tips though sometimes depends on where you are so i'm like dude you really 
And they agreed to go 50 She agreed but on still, it. Though. Like, you can agree to go 50 50 and still, like, are you, you the one I'm agreed to go 50 50 for if I'm not go 50 50? If you're going to go 50 50 and still not have the heart to be like, oh, okay. it's a matter of heart. It's a matter of heart. We have a heart problem. <laughs> He has a heart problem. I just don't. I, I don't understand the yeah, logic. A race like, problem and like, a heart problem. I get. I get money. I get. You know, protecting your investment. But this isn't some girl you just met f- two months ago. This is someone you're in a relationship with for two years. Two it years. honestly kind of sounds like they lived together. That's my assumption. I, there's no actual wording that says it, but. I, I get the fact that they live together because he obviously knows that she eats three meals a day. He knows she picked up the waitress job. Like two years, you're you're on a different level of intimacy. Like once you hit that year mark of dating someone, you you you're learning them in a new way. So sure. you know her financial situation. You know how much she makes. You know how much you make. You know the type of family you come from. Even if you want to do a family vacation, I'm not against that, but. Find an all-inclusive resort so it's not like every meal has to come out of pocket. Like, I'm all inclusive resorts and their food be trashed. Yeah, but it's free. No, it's not because I paid for it. Yeah, but you paid for it. You don't got to pay for it again. Like, you need to be considerate of... I think it's selfish to not be considerate of the class of people. And, like, if you... I know, like, if I'm going on a trip... I know the friends I want to go on that trip with because I'm not trying to have a broke ass time. I'm trying to have a good time. I'm trying to have a you got broke friends. No. no, because I'm trying to have good times. Uh, I'm trying. So to you, have, you don't I'm, have. I'm trying you, to have. You can't find good friends because they're poor. No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm no, that saying, is what you're saying. You're not saying it specifically, friends. but that's not. I'm, that's what I'm you're saying. I'm trying to have lukewarm summers. Okay, and to have lukewarm summers, <laughs> lukewarm <I> girl <laughs> summer. <laughs> We ain't hot. We're not boiling over here. We're lukewarm. It's comfortable. Oh you can stick your toe. You don't have to test the water. You just can am, get in. I am deceased. Uh, um, I need to have lukewarm summer. So I know, and even if I do have friends um, that I'm traveling with that don't make as much or I'm doing something with, even if it's something as simple as, hey, let's get together, I'll be conscious of the type of restaurant that we should go eat. We should go grab drinks at because I'll suggest like a nicer, like I'll suggest something. And if you bite, it's like, okay, well that's what your budget can afford. Or I'll give you opportunity to suggest that's just being considerate. That's being a good human being, you know, someone's pocket. So like, I'm not going to invite you to a five-star restaurant that, you know, has a cover charge or something and expect you to be able to, to do that. And if I do want to go to this place, there have been many times where I've had friends that I know I make more money than, that I've covered their their costs. I've you know. Covered. When when you was married? No. Okay, good. Because I conveniently got broke when I got married. <laughs> um, no, but like I, I've budget. had friends that I wanted to go out with, and yeah, you know, nobody's bill. We wanted to go to a particular. I wanted to go to a particular spot because you know I was going to wear heels, and I knew I wanted to sit down. So I knew this place had ample seating. Cover charge was maybe like fifteen dollars, and I knew, yes. Yeah, she can afford to go out, but she can't afford to go out and pay an extra $15. I covered the cover charge. I understand that. You know, it's it's like sometimes you'll pick up the the tab when you know, you know, like, you know, they can afford it. But you you might know that this particular meal might it might be helpful for me to take this off their plate. It's just human consideration. So I think. I, I got really upset because I was like, this is someone that you're intimate with. This is someone that, you know, I don't know that they're planning to get married or whatnot, but they're in a they're in a long term relationship. I think once you exceed six months, it's 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 getting towards long term two years. So to plan a whole vacation and to not have the heart to say or have the wisdom to think, I know my girlfriend's budget. I know she can't afford, she can probably barely afford the life she, she style she's living in terms of her apartment and all of that because she's working as a teacher. Who knows what big city this is? Uh, um, who, who says it's a big city? I'm just assuming it's a big city. I'm, it's New York, whatever. Um, she's making $45,000. I mean, if you're making $45,000, there are very few places in America that you're, you're comfortably living. Um, so... I, I just think it's really inconsiderate to not think, okay, we're going to go to Fiji and go there's on no, all there's of no, these. There's no place mentioned here. It I know. Say I, where just, they went. I need to build the details. And we're going to go on all of these excursions and we're going to, you know, have, you know, tuna tartare and, and do Wagyu beef. And poor girl has to only eat two meals a day. Like that you're, you are, you are not a good man that you didn't observe this. Like, 
You know your girlfriend eats three meals a day and you saw that she only she's on vacation and she's only eating two meals a day. Vacation, you literally get skinny to go on vacation so you can binge eat on vacation. Like in terms of observation and things that you're supposed to notice for your partner, he he didn't like I don't see why he couldn't have picked up the tab. And if you your parents come from money, like why would it like they're out with their kids? You said they're affluent. That does not mean that they are affluent is white people way of saying they are rich he's got a trust fund his brother has a trust fund his brother didn't pay for his wedding to his wife so it's just obnoxious to me i just I, a lot of assumptions here. i am because i mean you need to, people want, the people want the details i'm giving them the details um i just think it's obnoxious and i really details, don't think this is someone she should she should see herself with long term because if even a vacation you're whether relationship, whether marriage or just long-term dating is a partnership. And if your partner, if you can't recognize when you're in a situation, especially financially that you can't afford, that's a big deal. I applaud her because some people would have tried to show and, 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 and try to keep up with the Joneses and put it on a credit card, but she had discipline and she was like, no, I'm only going to do two meals. I'm not going to do. I cannot stop you on it. I don't know what I'm sorry. It's not your story. It's, it's late at night. It's so. not my story. It's a Reddit story. Um, I'm saying it's not your, your, your point. I mean, that you're I didn't making. even notice you were yawning. So okay. whatever. I'm sorry. Um, so I admire her for that. Like she stuck to her gun. She recognized what she could afford and what she couldn't afford. That is a woman of wisdom. He is a fool girl. Keep it moving. So wait a minute. Why, why is he a fool? Because you're, you're He's the here, one you're, because they're both they're both sticking to their original agreement, which was everything would be paid fifty fifty. So he paid his fifty, she paid her fifty. He's heartless. How is he heartless? He hurt his his girlfriend's stomach. Yeah. Growing. <laughs> he did. He hurt his. Who hears some that you know how close you have to be to someone to hear their stomach growl? If they're hungry enough, you could hear from across this the room. This is true. But if they're hungry enough and you can hear it across the room. And you know them vacation plates, they're usually not that big. They're not. And where affluent people eat, like they're doing, they're doing like the little croquettes. Yeah. yeah. Stuff in French. Yeah. Rodeurs. Yeah. I mean, when I read it after I got done laughing and um, went back and, and read it, it was like, this is kind of, this, this is tough. I mean, there are some people who are so about their money that if you go into a financial agreement with them, they will they will stick to it because every nickel and every dime is budgeted for. And it just so happens that he seems to make a lot more money than she does. And honestly, I think I think and this is this goes back to I think we touched on this in a very early episode of Rush Vibes. It was more so about marriage, but it was like you really need to know the people you're committing, your time, your energy, mm -hmm. and your emotional um, uh, emotional uh, well-being well to. Like, if you go on the first couple of dates and someone is like, "Yo, I'm a like," you need these are questions you need to ask. Like, how are you? Like, what about money? Like. I mean, maybe not the first date, but like once you get in, you know, get a, get a few dates, you know, under your belt. Like, so how do you want to like, how do you feel about money? Like you need to have these conversations mm -hmm. because when you, when I, I've met a handful of people who are about their money and, no it's, and it's like, great. it's like a real, it's like a re, like a religion. Like they are, they toe the line. If I budgeted this much for an experience, this is how much I'm spending. And I will not, I will not spend a, a dime more. So, you know, if, if you find yourself in a relationship with someone like that, you need to understand like, yo, this, this not personal. Mm -hmm. And you guys agreed on a 50, 50, you should have had probably a little bit more foresight when agreeing to go on a vacation. Maybe she agreed to go thinking, oh, well, I'm going to save up as much as I can. But, you know, if I'm short on something, or I can't afford something, you know, it's my dude. Two years in, he'll cover for me. Nah. Nah, player, player. Reality said, nah, your stomach's going to be grown. <laughs> so, I, I honestly, I it's, that's not something I would do, obviously, but I'm not I'm not someone who, like, it may be, that's why I haven't achieved a certain amount of money, because no matter how much I've had, I've never been the kind to not, you know, take care of someone. Um, all the time, I'll mm -hmm. I'll try to lay down the law with Jessica. Be like, "Yo, we're not spending no more than than this on something," and then she'll she'll bat her eyelashes at me. And be like, "All right, man, no, fine." I don't even do that anymore. <laughs> I just order it anyway. Just orders it. <laughs> and then I'll get mad, and then she'll just be like, mm -hmm. 
No, what I do is I'm one like, of these but days. look what I got you. <laughs> but one of these days, I'm going to cut her card off. One could argue that if you're in a committed relationship with someone for two years, you should be able to say, hey, babe, I've hit my point. Can you? Well, it shouldn't even be well, it doesn't. Me. Well, but, but you know, it's interesting. And granted, this is this is one person's perspective, but this doesn't. According to this, she never she never said that. That's what I'm saying. She, she, she one could argue for her that hey, if you understand that you've hit your max, this is you you are sticking to your guns in terms of how much you can spend, how yeah. much you've saved. You could say, hey, babe, look, we are. If this trip was five G's, I've I've I'm already at forty five hundred. I can't afford this, but I still want to have the good experience with you. Are you with you and your family? Are you willing to? Nah cover the rest <laughs> like, nah. i do think that's a conversation i think it's and it, i assume nah. them splitting 50 50 means that they live together but what, yeah but and they're splitting the bills but why i don't know that it it's reasonable to split 50 50 with someone who makes three times as much as you unless you guys are living on my income well rate. what's what's interesting is that apparently she got a second job to budget to help budget for everything but mm-hmm. was still like caught off guard so i'm wondering like like did you know how much like everything was gonna cost or? probably not you know affluent people no actually i don't well not too many um affluent people be flipping let's go on our yacht oh stop it and have caviar stop it you bleeding heart liberal and watch the sunset anyways <laughs> oh. First of all, we don't know that's, any. We don't know any. Any, any English, I've been any British TV. people. I've been watching TV forever. Tea and crumpets and all that. Um, nah, this is this was interesting. So yeah, I mean, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Me personally, I wouldn't. Even if we're just dating, I wouldn't have. And even if we set up a fifty fifty agreement, like you out there to have a good time, and if 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 I bring if if I bring a girlfriend along on a family trip. And I acknowledge and realize that she's not having a good time. Like, I'm not just gonna be like, Ooh, "Sucks for her." <laughs> you know, they were I'm gonna go to this. Her. I'm gonna go to this this third meal of the day while she sits in the room. Like, that's not me. But again, and this is this is what we talked about with the whole, um, you know, the whole uh, big thinker uh, extended weekend conversation. Like, when you are of a certain class, relationships are a little different. Mm-hmm. Like and and, and 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 expectations are different, and some people don't like essentially punt like dating down. Some people just don't. It's not a vibe. So which is fine. Which is fine, but I'm just saying. So maybe don't date down if you know that you need to do. If you make one fifty and you want to do fifty fifty with everybody, then whoever you're you're dating needs to also make one fifty. Yeah. Like that's just what it comes down to. Yeah, that's fine. Or, but like to my previous point. 50-50, in my opinion, means they're living at a $45,000 budget. Because if you're living in some an f- apartment or a house that's based off of the income of 150, 50-50 is well, completely You said different. we've always split things. So things is very general. So I don't like know. Like meals. Well, I don't know if it's like, you know, dates, um, vacations. I don't know that necessarily means utility bills and, and rent. True. It could just be like whenever we do something, we split it 50 50. Um, or, or if we do it a special occasion, like we split it 50 50. I don't know that it necessarily means like everyday bills mm-hmm. or whatever. Um, so that's what's in, I mean, you, you can only take out of it what, what you have that's yeah. definitive. And that's why I was giving you guys in details. a post like this. So, I mean, you know, as, as much of an, of an asshole as he does seem, his last, his last sentence is, there is some 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 credibility. It, it it's a valid statement, and he says, "I don't know why she agreed to come if cost was an issue." I'm just saying, if if y'all are together, granted the salaries are what they are, and you agree to split everything fifty fifty, you know this vacation is coming. You take on a second job. You obviously know that this person that you're with, speaking of from the the woman's perspective, this dude is not going to budge mm-hmm. on money. So why would you put yourself in that situation? And I mean, he definitely doesn't see it from a different social class either. Yeah. So like it's like his, his whole tone is just like, I mean, like, dude, I don't get it. Like, why is her stomach? Why is her stomach growling? She said she split everything 50 50. Um, like, I, Yo, 
you, you gotta be some kind of cold cat. <laughs> be in the room with your girl and, just, and you hear her stomach growling you just like and just to go to a meal without poverty your, like you came on a whole vacation and you went on a meal without your girlfriend like you went on multiple meals without your girlfriend it's crazy. I, it's crazy I personally think she like this is the type of person who you'd marry have a kid with and he'd be like so when is maternity leave over so you can go back and get these checks what you talk about you want to be a stay at home mom like this is in my opinion, just not. He's not that guy. Yeah. You need to come with your own money because he's not. Very, that very interesting. And one more thing that we don't have to, to deal with because we're, we're married and we don't have to split 50 50 because it all comes out of the same pot. Yeah. Unfo He'll be like, you paying for this? I'm Unfortunately. Like, yeah, with a debit card that's linked to the same account you have. Yeah. So. All right. We're going to take a break and then we'll be back with one more money slash relationship topic. Money vibes, financial vibes. Stay tuned. More money, more problems. And we're back. We for, back. Yeah, we back. For more money vibes. Money and relationship vibes. Where the money resides. Where does the money reside in your relationship? <laughs> so this topic, it's funny because, you know, David presented the issue that we just discussed about the dating thing. And I suppose money when you're dating are two completely different things um, to when you get married. So it just so happened that I, the other day I'm in, um, I always tell you guys about the retreats. We were talking about just Cynthia earlier, I believe. Um, Mary and having fun. Um, but she, she has a, her in touch women's retreats and we're also in a private Facebook group. So she posted and let me see if I can find it so I can quote it exactly. But she posted uh just a a, a me not a it's not a meme when it's something serious, is it? Um uh just an interesting topic for us to for the women in the group to discuss. And it said Let me see. If I thought you were prepared. I am prepared. No you're not. Um, not if you're trying to find it. Hush. Things are never in order when you're looking for things. You can edit all this stuff out. You just can this. I? Yes, you can. It'd be a lot easier if I didn't have to edit it's stuff out. That's what we pay you for. You pay me for nothing. Of course we can't find it. Um, but essentially she was saying, how does money work in your family or in your relationship? Is it your money and his money? Is it Or is it our money? And I... I found it interesting because I actually, I know I have a couple girlfriends who they split their money with their, with their spouses. And I always thought that that was weird. Uh, I grew up in a family where money wasn't split. It was just, if it comes into the house, it's, it's for the family. Now as a teenager, like my money was my money, but, um, how the family money, how convenient <laughs> the family money that was earned was for the family. Uh, I'm probably just not going to find it. I'll have to dig it up later. Mm. Uh, I so glad you were prepared. To, I want to be able to read it word yeah, for word. I wanted, you to, I wanted you to be prepared. Quiet? It's about to be my money. Um, so the post was just, you know, what's your perspective on, you know, how does money work in your relationship? So I responded, I was like, it's ours. Um, because, you know, when you get married, it becomes ours. Uh, especially, like, if it was yours, was his, is mine. What's mine is mine. Uh, but essentially, it all circulates back to the same people. But most of the women agree that, you know, money is what comes into the house, to, regardless of who earns it, is it's for the house. It's for the family. We live in the same house. We are, uh, we share the same last name. We are united by marriage. So it's, it's our money. Uh, I'm not here to, to judge if that's not your situation. Um, I'm speaking on our situation in my opinion. I know that there have been times where I've made more than you. There have been times where you made more than me. There have been times where you made and I didn't. Um, but there was, I mean, and I, I, was, I was telling someone recently, I was like, we've joked around, like, you'll, well, I don't joke around. He'll joke around and he'll be like, stop spending my money. Um, no, I say stop spending all my damn money. Excuse me. He says, stop spending all my damn money. Uh, I still spend it anyway. But so when we first got married, we created a joint account, but we each had our own individual bank accounts. And I think 
we each had like whatever the bare minimum to keep the account open free. So I think we each had 250 from each check going into our account. And we did that for a few years. And that was kind of just like our recreational spending money. But there were many times that we like outside of bills we dug into, like if we were going out to eat, it was our, our joint account. Like our joint account was where the majority of our money was going into. And David actually canceled his, his personal account first he was just kind of like i don't i don't really see the point um like you you know what i'm buying i'm spending my money on anyway i was like look here player i don't i don't know you'll be having some shady days i I don't it was still you know it's still year one you know how they tell us women you know you gotta have your own money you gotta you never know when he's going you're gonna gonna trip gonna flip on you you know baby mama might show up that you didn't know about that wasn't there before um you might just have to Get up and run. So you should have your own money. Um, so I kept my account. And honestly, there was no malice to it. I just liked, you know, I, I, I don't like when he does inventory of the bank account. He's like, oh, who spent $7 and something cents and said, you know, Froyo. Um, so I just kept it. And then after a certain point, I can't remember if the job I was working that was direct depositing, I might've switched jobs and it was just too much work to fit the information or maybe I wasn't working. I can't remember exactly, but I finally got rid of the account and this was fairly re- like maybe two years ago, maybe right before Savi was born. Um, I got rid of my personal account. Cause I was like, I mean, he gonna see these Amazon boxes anyway. I'm not gonna hide them. So, um, but for the most part, we've never had our money split. We've never had it set up like, okay, you pay for mortgage, I pay for you know electricity. You pay for this, I pay for that. It's just there's money in the account. There are bills that need to be paid. It needs to be. It it just goes. It gets paid. Like the money commingles. You don't know who it is. Um, but I know people who, I know people. I've heard people. I've seen interviews of people. Where, you know, their money is legit separate. Like, you have your own bills, and you are responsible for your bills. And I have my own bills, and I'm responsible for my bills. And, you know, you split. Like, okay, you bring however much you need to your half of the mortgage, and I bring my half of the mortgage, and we pay it off. And I suppose that that works for them. For me, that's not how I grew up. That's not what I, I grew up seeing. That's not, you know, my dad was, for a lot of my life, my dad was the breadwinner. There was a season of several years where he had shifted into the ministry and my mom was essentially bringing in more money because, um, you know, pastors, not all them pastors be balling like that. So, you know, my mom was in real estate. She was bringing in the money, but there was never a, this is my money, don't spend it. Like my dad would, I would, I remember my dad coming home, you know, he's gone to the bank, he's cashed his check and he just, hands his check over to his mo- my mom and he'd be like you see she takes my money she takes my money like he was always proud of the fact that he didn't touch the money he didn't know about the money my mom managed the money so much that one time my dad signed the check and the bank would not cash the check because my mom the bank didn't recognize my dad's signature because my mom was always handling all of that um so that's just what i'm used to it's it's our money now i have my little side hustle I'll be quick to tell David, like, you, that's my money. Um, but that's more of a pride thing. Like, I, I worked for this money. For this money, I worked. So I, we going to call out my coins. Um, but I just find it interesting, and I wonder the strain that that can put on. I'm sure there, for, there are some couples that it's beneficial for them to not share money. Um, everybody handles money differently. And I'm sure that there, for some couples, it would probably be more beneficial if they handled the money together. But I wonder if gender plays a role, if it's more expected that if the man works, then it becomes our money. But if the woman works, then it's her money um, because there are not a lot of situations or it's not – as common that the woman is the breadwinner for the home. Um, so I wonder if that makes a difference, if it's more like a, I'm taking care of everything, so this is my money. Like, you go, you make your own money. Um, I don't know. I just wonder, it, it wouldn't work for me. Like, <laughs> yeah, I'm broke as a joke. So, not as a joke, but like as a, as a giggle. So, you know, obviously... 
I would be, if, you know, if I'm paying my own phone bill, I'm buying my own, you know, food to post on Yelp. I'm, you know, buying all of my goodies out of my own pocket. Like, I'm be, if I'm supposed to be contributing rent um, on my part-time freelance gigs, like, that would be, that'd be rough. And I'd be upset with him. Like, you really going to take me on vacation and not, <laughs> not feed me three meals a day? Yeah, one. As long as you get the most important one, that's all you need. What's most important, David? Get that breakfast. That's all you need. I've rambled. Go on. Um, <clears throat> I I too am aware of uh, uh, and and know some couples who split their money and uh, do so very efficiently, like budget, got savings accounts, they got stocks, and the four hundred one ks is all split. Like no money uh, at all. Their money don't touch. It's like their sides on a plate. Like don't touch. Mac and Mac, Mac and the greens don't touch. Uh, but then we know couples like us who, or I know couples like us who just kind of put it all, it's all in one pot and you know, they still manage it, you know, very efficiently and very well. Um, I don't, I don't know that there's any, like, I don't, I don't know that the, if, if it, if a man works, it's, a, it's, our money if, if it's the woman making more it's it's her money i don't know if, if any of that comes into play i think it just depends on on the person again class in which you you find yourself you and your and your partner find yourself or spouse find yourself um i know when we when we were spending our money it was just kind of like you said it was like the newness of it of being married you're kind of used to having your own money um so coming together and then just immediately putting everything into one place it just was a little uncomfortable the thought of it uh, especially as you don't really know spending habits um like i had an idea of jessica's spending habits but i didn't really know what they were like and i I would imagine the same for for her with with mine so it was kind of like a feeling out process but eventually it was just like like i don't really spend my money like wildly anyway so it it just makes more sense for it all to be in be in one spot um and it didn't really make sense to just be putting two fifty in the Bank of America every day, and it wasn't like accruing. Like I wasn't getting like any interest or anything like that. So it just made sense to put it all in, in one place. So I, I think I was the first one to to cancel my individual. Jessica kept hers for a good minute. Mm-hmm. I was like, years. It's like, ma'am. <laughs> but you know, I mean, I I have no problem with her um, having her own because at the time she was still the more uh, socially active one. Right. So like she would still go out, um, although most of the times when she went out, it was it was because of the job that she was working. So a lot of the times the company, uh, she was putting a lot of the food on, on her uh, on her company credit card. But, you know, it was it was what it was. I didn't I didn't think I didn't really think anything of it. It was just she wanted to have her own money. And that's that's fine, um, because I knew that I think at the time she was making more. Uh, than than I was, so it was like, I guess she has. I mean, she makes more, so I guess she has a right to <laughs> put her own little her own little little stash away. But eventually, you know, everything kind of kind of fell into to one place, and um, I manage the money now, which you know, I assume is a good thing. Uh, I think I, I think I, I manage it a little we bit. Have no lights because I'd be forgetting <laughs> to pay stuff. I do I everything I, on auto. I think I manage it a little a little bit better. I like to manage manually rather than than doing auto auto drafts. Um, I like to have control over when when we put our money somewhere. Um, and I think a lot of times when you when you do auto draft, it's easy to set and forget, and that's how you get late fees. And those late fees, man, you think about companies like you think it may only be that's like overdraft. a couple of bucks, or a bank an overdraft may only be like twenty five bucks or whatever. Would you think about how many customers they have? Like I think it was Goldman was it Goldman Goldman Sachs one of the big banks, um, in the year twenty twenty, they had like over I think it was like three or six billion dollars of revenue came from oh, over. Is that what Elizabeth Warren's fight? Yeah, yeah it came from it came from overdraft fees. Like, that's, that's, there are companies like who don't do like business revenue, service revenue, just from like products and services don't do six billion in three three to six billion in revenue in a year like that's just insane so um, that's why i don't really like doing auto drive because but that's the difference with how we spend so when we were we were dating i was living on my own i was 
a hustler. I feel like the word hustler gets overused, but you know, I, I was a hustler. I was in school. I was at least juggling two jobs, like two full-time like marketing program campaign jobs at any given moment. Um, I did have like two or three credit cards that I'd use like just to build my credit, but I'm talking, you know, I think one might have had a thousand dollar credit limit and another one had like two fifty. And I'd use it and I'd get my paycheck and I'd pay the whole thing off. Like I I was one of those I'm gonna I'm gonna pay it off. I'm not gonna have a I don't have balances. So that was something big. Like he and we don't have credit cards now, but he's very strategic about like how we're we're gonna put our money. So like if I was handling the bills when I get a full bill, I'm, I'm paying the whole thing off. Like I'll even put on extra for, for next month. So I don't even have to hear from you. Um, but he's, he is able to keep track of everything like that. I'm like, I got too many things going on, which is why when we got married and we got to the point where he was like, I'm going, I can't remember what triggered for him to say, I'm going to take over the bills. I think it was more so you're in school, you're working two jobs. It might've been, I might've been pregnant. It might've been around after solace was born. And he was just kind of like, let me take something off your plate. And I appreciated it because I've spent, you know, since I was 18, I've been, you know, living on my own for the most part, paying my bills. So I was, I was tired. It was nice to be able to relinquish that responsibility to somebody. I think I've said on the podcast before, I've said it to other people. If God forbid something happened to David, I don't know how to pay our mortgage. I can figure it out. I don't know how to pay. I don't know how to pay our electricity. Electricity is in my name because I had electricity that I transferred over when we moved into the house. I don't know how to pay electricity. I feel like either water or gas is in my name. I think water is in your name. Water is in my yeah, name. I think gas is, is in your name. internet or anything. I don't know how to pay name. the water bill. Um, I think one time I had to pay the water bill and he literally had to walk me through it. I am a competent woman who's been living, who's lived, who has had, who has signed leases, who has run multi million dollar marketing programs. I can't pay my mortgage. I can't pay my water bill. I can't pay my electricity. But that's because I I could do it. I'm not saying I'm incapable of doing it. I could do it. But it's I, I've got a partner who recognizes that his strength is handling the finances for the family. And I think he's doing a great job. It's not even something that I want to be like, hey, you want to switch it up? Let me try. No, I don't, I don't want that smoke. I don't keep it. You're doing a great job. Even if you weren't doing a good job, I'd be like, keep it. Cause I just, I just don't want to deal with it. Like he'll ask me, like, have you looked at the bank account? And I'm like, no, I don't want that negativity in my life. Um, I live by faith and not by sight, <laughs> uh, which shows you the evolution of my spending habits. But yeah, I'm very much so lump sum, pay it all off. Um, but that can be, that can bite you in the butt cause you pay something all off here and then you still have other bills down the road that you have to pay. And now you have to recalculate all of these things. So, um, I definitely think it's important to like, you know, they tell you find out your love language, but I think there are other languages that make up marriage that it's important to find out what is your financial language? What is your, you know, communication language? Like there are other things you need to know about yourself and your partner so that you can recognize like, okay, who has the strength in this area? Who doesn't? But I also think, you know, when you come in as a partnership, like it's important to, to determine how you're going to be a partner. Cause I do know women who are like, this is my money. He can't touch it. But what if the roles were reversed? What if you, for some reason are not able to work? Are you going to say, because I'm the woman I, or be, like, or because I'm me and you love me, you should support me. Like if anything happened and I was working full time and David was not, it wouldn't, it, there would never be a question in my mind that, Oh, well, I mean, put, pick yourself up by your bootstraps and get to it. Like Piggly Wiggly up the street, go, go get you a part-time job stocking. No, we're, we're a family. Like we're supposed to like, what's yours is mine and what's mine is yours. So that's, and, and that's what I want to teach our girls. By no means should anyone take advantage and just sit around while, you know, you're supporting them and vice versa. You shouldn't sit around while someone is supporting you. Um, and I think there are lots of misconceptions on what sit around is. I have a misconception. Um, even though I work a little bit, I still am like, I'm not a contributor to the household, but you know, on, on a frequent basis, David reminds me like, and it's crazy that he has to remind, like, I know all the things I do, but sometimes I need him to remind me so that I can be like, all right. So he doesn't think I'm a freeloader. Um, he recognizes that I'm making effort and I want to do more, but right now I'm in a situation where I can't, um, 
But I just think seasons go back and forth and you just never know what season you're going to be in where, you know, you won't have the upper hand and you'll need to depend on your partner. And that's part of, you know, a partnership that's part of marriage, being able to be vulnerable and lean on your other half and say, hey, not or not even have to say hey or not even have to wait for them to hear your stomach growling. They just recognize the situation and they step up, whether it be your man stepping up and being like, I'm going to, you know, take the reins financially, I'm gonna handle this, I'm gonna pay these bills, or you being like, Hey, I'm gonna step in, I got this, you, you know, take the back seat, take the passenger seat, handle something else. But it's 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 a give and take. You cannot always control the situation. And if you're looking at it from a gender perspective, it's not masculinity doesn't come from you being the breadwinner and 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 making all the money like i said i went through seasons growing up where my dad like my dad like you called the house at 1 15 in the afternoon it's my dad picking up the phone and he's the one coming to pick you up from school if you're sick uh and my mom was you know out in these streets selling houses and there was never the the respect was so that's one thing i appreciate from my parents the respect was so there i never saw a moment where it was like my mom carried herself above my father because she was making money. He was still working. You know, he traveled on occasion for the ministry every Sunday he was having service, but it's, it's being a minister. If, unless you're at a very high level, it's not a lucrative industry. But when I look back at it, it was never, um, it's mom's money and mom's paying for this. It was, everything came from the same account. Like everything was linked to the same account. I think my mom did. My parents did have separate accounts too, kind of like we did, but it wasn't like a, this is my money separate account. And even when my dad was working, like he was giving her money to put into her separate account. Uh, and then there were times where they were both working. So I think you just, you just never know the seasons of your relationship. So you have to be careful what divisibility <laughs> you create because you never know when the waves are going to shift. And now you can't afford 50, 50, but you've already, you know, put it in stone that we're always going to do everything 50-50. Life shifts. Shifts happen. You saw that. So, um, you felt that. You heard that. I think that that's a good place to stop because your, your puns are... It's getting late. I'm tired. Terrible. Shifts happen. And Yes, they do. And it does. Um, so that's it for this episode how do you yeah for those of you who comment regularly and we appreciate you by the way um new subscribers don't be shy on youtube um how do you if you're married uh how do you and your spouse uh, handle the money and if you aspire to be married one day how do you plan to handle your money with your spouse we'd love to know um it'd be it'd be a great uh, discussion point so feel free to drop it in the comments and if we, you make more money than your partner do you split things 50 50 on vacations or would you let your spouse <laughs> stomach grumble or girlfriend or, or, or boyfriend girlfriend stomach grumble so this was a this was a pretty pretty lax episode especially coming off the heels of of last week um we uh, are very happy that we are 34 episodes strong that's so crazy every time i know we were like oh we did 24 episodes in the next week. I can't believe it's 25 episodes. But yo, 30 freaking four episodes of Rush Vibes is a insane. Big. Yeah, when we hit 50, that's gonna be that's gonna be wild. I don't know. We gotta have like a big, big guest for 50 or like a Pop big, big, cider. big, big celebration for 50. I don't know. I'd have to do the math when that when that would actually come. I think it would be this year. It would be. It would be 20 or 16, 16, 16 weeks. From 16 weeks from now would be when? Oh, we might not be. We may not be. We, not be we may not be recording. We may be busy welcoming uh, Sleep deprived. the latest, the latest and greatest. The latest vibe. So uh, we appreciate everybody who's been on the journey with us and everybody who's who's joined at, at different points. Definitely continue to keep, definitely plan to continue to keep growing this thing. So we appreciate all the support, all the love and all the comments and all the engagement. So, um, as always, we'll bring Jay Belk in. Hey, Jay. Nice and slow. Um, hope you all had a good week. Appreciate you watching the vibes. Um, hope you have a great rest of your week. Have a good weekend. Be safe. New episodes every Wednesday. We'll see y'all next week. We love y'all. We out. I can't wait too fucking stop me now.
<laughs> I done came way too far, can't stop me now Can't stop me now, can't stop me now Yeah, I done came way too far, can't stop me now